Lisa Verde, we're back, and today we're gonna to talk about bourbon and rye whiskey. So bourbon and rye are both two different whiskeys, typically American style whiskeys. Whiskey is just a distilled grain. They take the grain, they make it into essentially a beer, they distill that, booze. Basically what you got. We have three examples of rye whiskey. So what rye does is it adds a spice, different flavor characteristics. It's not as sweet as some of the other grains you can use. So you get a lot more of those spicy, robust notes. Um, on my right, we have the bourbons. Bourbons have to made at least 51% corn. The corn makes it a lot sweeter. Now, both of these have some requirements as to the alcohol percentage, things like that. We're not gonna get into that details. Um, the big thing though is they all have to be aged in charred new oak. So they can't reuse barrels, which means the flavor never diminishes. So the charring level really determines the flavor characteristics you can get from the bourbon or the rye. The char, uh, high, heavier char have more like that roasty notes, the lighter char is less so. Regardless, you should get like vanilla, spices, things like that, that really bring out a lot of flavor into the drinks. So rye were the original big dog in America. Up in post-Civil War, um, even through colonial era, George Washington actually made rye whiskey in Mount Vernon, made about 11,000 barrels of it a year. By the beginning of the 1800s, uh, during the Industrial Revolution, we drank uh, in America about a half a barrel per man, woman, and child. Then after uh, Prohibition and everything ended, bourbon took over. Rye is currently making a bit of a comeback. Now, see some things on these labels. Um, over here, you got small batch. On this one, you can see uh, single barrel, straight rye. So those just have some requirements. I mean, small batch doesn't have any requirements. You can call it small batch if you use um, 100 barrels in your blend or use 20 barrels in your blend. There is no legal requirement for small batch. It's marketing. Single barrel has to be a single barrel. Now, if it says straight rye or straight bourbon, like on Angel's Envy, that has some specifics. You, um, you can only blend from barrels that you used that are made the same way in a specific location. You can't add any colorings. You can't add any um, other things you're mixing in besides the bourbon or the rye. All right. So the first drink we're gonna make today, we're gonna make a rye old fashioned, circa 1880. So this is something you may get at a nice high-end bar, hotel type thing, maybe Manhattan, Boston, Chicago, something like that. So this is pretty much what they'd use. They'd use a rye whiskey and then whatever their house blend is. So this one in particular has absinthe, uh, maraschino liqueur by Luxardo, orange curacao, gum syrup, and Angostura bitters with an orange zest. First couple ingredients, pretty simple. Bar spoon of absinthe, and then we're gonna do a bar spoon of the Luxardo, and then a bar spoon of orange curacao. If you don't have a bar spoon at home, you can use a teaspoon, works just the same. And then we'll do two bar spoons of gum syrup, and then we'll measure out our rye. Um, I like the Basil Hayden rye. I like the flavors it adds. It adds a lot more of those dark multi notes. They add a little bit of port with this one, which kind of sweetens it up a little more than a traditional rye. We do two ounces of that, and then a couple of dashes of Angostura bitters. I like three dashes. Then the fun part, you zest the orange, and you do a little bit of showmanship. All right, so now, best part, we get to drink it. So the smokiness comes through on the nose. It takes away from the sweetness of the syrup. The rye spice comes in, a little bit of the orange, kind of like the cherry note right off the bat too. As it finishes, you get a little bit of that star anise from the absinthe. It's a really well-balanced cocktail, really good. Especially if you like old fashions, highly recommend you try making this at home. So the second drink we're gonna make is the Mesa Verde Old Fashioned. It's pretty easy, we use Duke's Bourbon, Luxardo cherries, and then two different kinds of bitters, the regular Angostura, as well as an orange Angostura to add a little more of that orange element. And then I also add some uh, turbinado syrup. First thing we do, take the Luxardo cherry, we add an orange peel, as well as two dashes each of regular Angostura and orange Angostura, and a ounce of simple syrup muddle that all together. Then we add three ounces of bourbon, country club pour. Give that a quick little stir. Strain it into a fresh glass over ice. 
And then we add a fresh look starter cherry for garnish. All right, Mesa Verde, we got our old fashioned here. Right off of that, you can smell the vanilla, the char of the oak, a little bit of the bitters, the orange coming through, a little bit of that maraschino. And then the taste confirms everything. The sweetness, the maltiness of the bourbon, the orange and the aromatic bitters from the Angostura and the maraschino all combine well into a nice cocktail. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. You can drink one of these at the bar with me.